November 10th, 2017. We took some shims out of the big end brass on the HP rod and also the wrist pin bearing. We took shims out of that and, and quieted it up quite a bit. And now we're going to take shims out of the LP, the low pressure cross head. So I'm going to show you the process here. Should be pretty quick. Like, like the Stanley Steam Car guys said, one pipe, ten minute, no problems. No problem. So we'll see if that holds true here. That was a sarcastic inside joke. So I'm going to take the lock nut off. Carefully placing everything or it won't fall into the bilge. And we've been running it for a little bit, so everything is hot. Dad is topside munching on Ritz crackers. That's what the plastic wrapper noise is. Sorry. So there's a pin here. I'll pull that out and then I gotta take out the there's a set screw that a wedge right here. I gotta loosen up the set screw that holds that wedge in place so I can pull the wedge out. Luckily with an engine this big it's not not quite standing on your head like in smaller launch engines. And this is the process strictly for the, a 1909 Doty compound. Not quite sure. You know, of course, every every engine is going to have a different process, even within the you know, same company. And now it's called barring the engine over, getting the connecting rod in the right position so I can pull this pin out without bumping into things. It slides out, like so. Don't break it, don't break anything! Wedge. Make sure I keep track of which way it went in. I'm going to put it back in with the side with all the set screw marks on it. My little notches that somebody a hundred years ago put into it so he can remember which way it went in. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the crankshaft so the piston's all the way at the top. I'm going to put some in there to keep the piston at the top and then continue turning and the connecting rod will pull out of the cross end or out of the little end.
something convenient like a giant crescent wrench. And the links out of the way. That one's a little too big. Let's find something else, shall we? Not a box down bridge. Okay. Everything is hot. See the cross is being held in place now. The rod is coming free. Support it so it doesn't hit anything. So this is the wrist pin brass here. And these are the little shims that were in it. It's a stack of shims. We're going to take this stack of shims out because this rest pin brass is like a locomotive, an earlier locomotive, American locomotive, where the, the wedge, this wedge, pushes underneath the brass here, like so, and cl closes the clearance on the wrist pin. And so, in theory, you loosen up the set screw, give the wedge a little tap, and it'll take up that clearance, and then you tighten the set screw up again and I'll maintain that clearance until it's worn and then you tighten it up a little bit more and a little bit more. So we're going to take those shims out so we don't have to deal with those anymore and that way we have an infinite adjustment or not infinite but adjustment up and up until it needs the brass it's taken up and remachined and uh, we'll go from there so now shims are out we're gonna put this back together look and feel make sure there's no other shims in there that aren't supposed to be in there we'll put the brass back in And then cross it, or a connecting rod rather. I can lift it back up. I pull out my thumb in time. Okay, now that's back together. I'm gonna put the the wedge back in place. Pull the piston stop out. Looks like we'll need. Little bit of 
space to get the wedge in. Nope. So we'll slowly lower it down. Okay. So the rod isn't all the way in yet. So I'll push down on the piston. There we go. Insert the wedge. So I'm gonna give it a few like taps. We set the clearance there, and after we set it, we'll run it for a while, flood it with oil, and continue to feel the bearing, make sure it's not getting too hot. Obviously, it's going to get warm because it's proximity to the, it's connected to the piston rod, and that's going to be hot steam temperature. So it's going to get some heat that's going to soak through it that way but we should be able to tell if the uh, bearing is getting too hot. Check, make sure it didn't come loose. And I'll mark it so I can see where it's been. Set screw here. Also by marking it, we'll know whether or not it's coming loose and whether or not the set screw is was tight enough. Nut, jam nut. Pin back in. Jam nut. Okay. 
Okay, let's put some steam to it and see if it worked. Still hot from running.
warm down here. 